Tropical disturbances in the Atlantic, among several areas of interest to monitor around the world. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for August 26th. So it's looking still very quiet tropics as we enter the peak season in the northern hemisphere. Ma'an dying out as a tropical depression and Tokage moving off to the northeast as an extra tropical storm now. So at this moment in time there are no actual storms active and still the remnants of 4B. In the Atlantic it's day 87 of hurricane season and we've marked two areas of interest at low chance in the next five days. Um, along the main development region and off the coast of Africa. Keep watching that closely as we get towards that five day period. Things could warm up there as we get towards the turn of the month. On day 104 of the Eastern Pacific hurricane season, no signs of life lately and still nothing on the radar for the next five days. Long range models suggesting that there might be something later on down the line. In the Western Pacific we have uh, apart from the dying storms, two other areas of interest, 20% each. Uh, the first one which could follow a very similar track to Takagi and the other one which could develop into a large cyclone out towards the Japanese Ryukyu Islands towards the end of that five day period. And in the Indian Ocean the remnants of 4B are still traceable over uh, southern south central Pakistan right now although we expect it will absolutely be done for and gone and wiped off our screen by the time we come back in 24 hours. Satellite imagery right now this is what the Atlantic is displaying and you can see there in the Sargasso Sea not far from the Bahamas a nice little uh, rotation uh, but a system that isn't providing much convection just a little feature there off in the distance you might see that disturbance in the main development region which isn't looking too bad the eastern Pacific showing uh, one or two little disturbances in the uh, tropical zone there as well but nothing that's really going to get itself going dry air still dominating the open seas um, and really not much on the schedule there whilst we've got no actual storms to look at right now i thought we'd take a close up at that atlantic feature and uh, the general cloudiness that's going on in the whole area florida there lots of thunderstorms blowing up this afternoon and this evening uh, but just another look at that area of interest it's not an area of interest but just a little feature that we've spotted um, attached to the bottom of a front and there's some visible imagery the light leaving Central America there Mexico and a few little blow-ups that are occurring just a general little cursory look at the region well then now let's take a look at the Western Pacific this is what's happened in the last 24 hours you may be able to see the remnants of Matt on well not remnants it's still the depression moving inland over northern Vietnam Tokagi well off the screen by now um, and still the doldrums of the tropical zone there in the mid tropics looking like more systems might try and spawn itself out of all of those thunderstorms here is the Indian Ocean. Uh, you might still see little bits of 4B which is being sprawled across the uh, Asian continent actually. Some of its outflow or remnant energy is being stretched as far as Mongolia. Um, and looking towards the South Pacific, uh, you can see maybe a little disturbance now developing well to the west of Indonesia. Uh, which is something that we have marked for a 30% chance now actually in the next five days and some general thunderstorms near the Solomons. Sea surface temperatures at this time really appear to be rising quite a bit off the coast of Mexico. Quite a good area of 30 degrees Celsius waters now which is more than what we previously saw. The Atlantic Ocean, Gulf of Mexico, very warm, 30 degrees plus, and warming quite a bit at this time. And the open ocean as well, looking decently warm. The main development region, uh, a little bit cooler, but still decent energy for potential tropical cyclones. The Atlantic is boiling and waiting for its potential storms. 
In the Indian Ocean, temperatures remain decent. The Western Pacific, South China Sea, still very warm waters even after the passage of Ma'an, uh, still pushing 30 degrees quite easily. And in the Philippine Sea, also 30 degrees plus, getting up towards 32 in some areas. Into the East China Sea, Okinawa, beyond towards Japan, extremely warm sea surface temperatures, quite a bit above average in those areas which is sure to fire up some extra activity in the Western Pacific, whether it be now or in the future. Here's the anomalies, the red zones are above average and the blue is below average. The La Nina effect is still very much kicking there in the central Pacific and because it is displaced so far west we are in rather uncharted territory with uh, sea surface temperature anomalies going back to 1984 in detail at least. We haven't seen anything quite like that current setup. The Atlantic showing extremely high oceanic heat content in the Caribbean Sea and extending through the Bahamas now as well and getting a little bit higher oft in the open waters too. Eastern Pacific is looking okay near the coast of Mexico only and the Western Pacific is always uh, hot and ready to go so that is certainly not an issue so let's check our latest GFS computer models the short range up to five days showing this for the Atlantic now and you can see this potential system developing uh, unfortunately I'm unable to see the imagery as once again the software has broken on me uh, but towards the end of that five day period if I recall from memory the system starts to develop near Cape Verde or emerging off the coast of Eastern Africa um, in the Caribbean that disturbance doesn't amount to anything and in the main development region the second disturbance doesn't really do much either here's a look at the Western Pacific you can see Takagi moving well off there and there's that next storm the potential copycat there a very small all cyclone but could become a typhoon according to that GFS model run there um, and then later on in that five day period you take a look at this other system starting to emerge towards the end of that model run um, we've given it a 20% chance because it is supported by multiple models of becoming a tropical depression in that five day period the other area of interest the first one may have higher chances as well as the GFS didn't pick up Takagi very well so maybe it will be the same for that second system. Here's some rain charts showing how much more rain is yet to arrive in parts of Indochina from Ma'an and its eventual remnants all the way through to Myanmar you'll be seeing substantial amounts of rain affecting the coast, uh, not the coast but southern China along the border with uh, Laos and with Vietnam and parts of northern Thailand as well we could be seeing high uh, rainfall totals of 7 inches maybe 8 inches which is 200 millimeters in total in the next seven days so flooding is going to be a concern into the longer range this is day five through ten and we can take a look once again at the Atlantic zone and if I remember rightly this run shows a substantial storm forming in the Gulf of Mexico so that is something that we're gonna have to watch quite closely when we take a look towards the end of that run it is getting towards day 10 uh, so there's still a lot of uncertainty but it is something that's just starting to pique a little bit of curiosity curiosity in the met community right now uh, into the eastern pacific we have potential for a system forming there as well take a look at this another spin-up storm that becomes a hurricane and there it is quite a substantial one at that as well although it stays out to sea and that is all that's really there just to mention that atlantic one again moving into the gulf of mexico a substantial hurricane as well on tap from the gfs model you can see it just in the corner of the screen there approaching northern mexico the western pacific for this period as well uh, this storm really starts taking shape it's always been forecasted to be a very broad system and that could become a major typhoon there as it approaches taiwan could be one for taiwan there before moving into china but that at the end of the loop there is the 5th of september which feels like a hell of a long time away um, so there's still a lot of uncertainty regarding that system in particular as well as its rather unassured movement there 
Well, that's all the important stuff out of the way. You can take a look at our merch store by scanning that barcode and taking a look at all of our merch products, including our individual and full season animations on request. And also, they're still waiting for Hone t-shirts since it doesn't look like it's going to come anytime soon. Well, let's take a look at the silly range and I can finally see the imagery again properly. And look at that, a major hurricane, an enormous one actually, striking near the border with Mexico and Texas. Um, that's extremely long range though, day 11, day 12, so I wouldn't put any weight into that yet, but just showing what we have out there. And at the very end of that run there, maybe another enormous tropical cyclone trying to form along the coast of Florida there. Um, so, uh, and maybe even another system there in the interim actually, it just moves through Cuba and uh, a weak little system there, so it's all going on. In the Eastern Pacific there's that other storm, but once again that Atlantic one really catching the eye, and an enormous tropical storm again off the coast of Mexico there as well, sprawling and then moving inland, um, and then they all start moving east and another system tries to form maybe in the Central Pacific there, or near the border with it, uh, towards the end of that loop. So if that happens, that would be an interesting time in the Eastern Pacific. All of this that you've seen is not out of the realms of possibility, uh, but it is extremely long range and the models have a bad track record. And here's another look at the same thing, actually. I have no idea why it's been looped twice, but there it is once again that you can take a look at all of those developments, including that massive Atlantic hurricane, the size of that wind field is just outrageous, covers almost the whole section of the gulf there. Uh, but it's unlikely that we'll see anything to that extent, but you can never completely rule it out as we enter the peak of hurricane season. Finally, the Western Pacific, there's that typhoon moving inland over China. Anything else that forms behind it, let's have a look. And something's trying there. Yep, that's a tropical storm. And there it goes, developing into another typhoon, moving into the South China Sea. And looks like it develops into a major headed towards the Hong Kong region. Once again, extremely far out, but once again, not out of the realms of possibility. At least we're not seeing any Category 5s on these model runs just now. Although previous model runs did have some strong storms in the very long range. And it just changes just like that quite often, so not to be trusted. On this day, August 26, 2011, uh, Hurricane Irene was a Category 2 just leaving the Bahamas, but the biggest story was Typhoon Namadol, which was a extremely powerful Category 5 storm near the coast of Luzon in the Philippines and made a fairly close pass, if I remember rightly. Tropical Depression 10 had also formed in the Eastern Atlantic, 11L was also on the, on the way later that day, would become Jose, and Talas was also active in the open waters near the Ogasawara island chain of Japan. So this year, 11 years later, we have Danielle next up on the Atlantic naming list. In the Eastern Pacific, our next name is Javier. In the Central Pacific, the next name on list one is still Hone. Western Pacific is also vying to get its 50th storm for the world this year. Hinam Noor is the next name. The North Indian Ocean's next name is Sitrang. And over in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, the action really gets going towards the late part of this year, but in the Australian region, the next name is Darien. The Southwest Indian Ocean will start with Ashley. And in the South Pacific, the next name on our list at the moment is Harley. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.